Two weeks ago, we looked at Burundi as a case study in political instability uh, and the long-term legacies of political systems uh, inherited from colonial powers or elsewhere. We didn't talk that much about environmental factors, so I thought I might take a couple of minutes and highlight a couple of um, relevant uh, human security and uh, climate and geographic factors uh, for the country uh, and then leave more time for you to actually look at a couple of interesting uh, videos that more viscerally show ways in which the people there have tried to uh, adapt to um, deforestation and uh, resource depletion uh, as well as um, dealing with climate change issues and how that affects uh, agricultural production, so tying it in to the themes that we've seen earlier today. Um, so a couple of brief um, characteristics of the state and its environment that I thought would be useful and that we're going to keep coming back to over the course of the semester, uh, always with issues of um, measurement uh, ha can shape what people actually look for and how we look at states and how they're doing relative to other states. You can either look at absolute uh, measures of how well states are doing or how well they're keeping up with their peers. Um, Burundi is a stark, a stark example of um, how neighboring countries uh, landlocked, roughly the same size, roughly this, uh, the same ethnic breakdown, uh, diverged so dramatically um, since 1995. Rwanda, um, now considered the Singapore of Africa, not necessarily uh, democratic freedoms, uh, but stability and uh, economic growth. Um, Burundi, on the other hand, um, uh, destabilized in the last five years by a leader who decided not to leave, an ongoing conflict that happened uh, before then, um, and a number of people who've had to flee uh, to neighboring countries because of the political instability since 2015. Now with the new leader, uh, the future is also uncertain, though people can be um, hopeful um, that there might be some opportunity for change within the country. It has one of the highest popula population densities in Africa, the third highest, with a little over 400 people per square kilometer. To put that in perspective, Australia has 3.2 people uh, per kilometer. Sydney has roughly the same population density as the entire country uh, of Burundi. Uh, Canberra has a slightly higher. Um, the population growth is much higher than in Australia, 3.2% per year. GDP per capita of only um, two, $284 as of 2017 with purchase private uh, purchase power parity, which instead of just dividing economic production by the number of people within a country, you look at roughly how much a basket of goods costs in different countries. That moves up um, the GDP per capita a bit higher to $700 US per person, but still one of the poorest countries in um, the world. Agricultural uh, Agriculture is over half of the gross domestic product. 90% of exports are agricultural, and it supports 90% of the labor force. So an agricultural country, um, no uh, widespread irrigation systems, and a large percentage of people are tied to the land. Forest uh, cover has decreased dramatically from 46% um, at independence um, to 3.5% now. So you see in a quite short period of time, almost half the country has completely become deforested in um, in a really high dense small landholder agricultural society um, the picture that i showed in in the beginning kind of show the rolling hills i haven't been to burundi spent some time in rwanda and it is quite remarkable that ex um, Except for really the, the eastern part where it goes down into Tanzania, it is uh, quite mountainous and hilly and the number of tracts of land are large and the size of them are, are small. Only about half of the population has access to clean water, an ongoing challenge in a number of developing countries that can lead on to a number of health security risks through waterborne uh, diseases. People having to go fetch water has led to a host of uh, difficulties in the amount of time people have to go in order to get uh, water and 
often it, it's it's women going to get water and there's uh, security issues with people having to go uh, farther in order to get water. 90% um, of the energy usage is burning wood or charcoal or peat, which links to the first video um, after mine, which uh, is trying to find other ways to try to use um, energy resources that don't require cutting down wood because people are burning it a lot quicker than the trees can grow. Um, most of the uh, electricity that is generated are from two hydroelectric uh, electric dams. So the, the hills make it difficult to, to potentially uh, develop and to uh, scratch a living out of the land, but it does provide opportunity um, with adequate rainfall to be able to generate electricity by letting the rain through and, and go down river. Just a, uh, a fuzzy graph of population growth showing how, how dramatically the population has grown just in the last decade from a little over uh, eight and a half million people to 11 million people as of 2017. It's going up since then. So the population growth, the nature of the population, a lot of young people within the country, which is going to be relevant uh, next week in our discussion of population. People have done research. This is a report from USAID over a decade ago, but there's been, um, Burundi has been less studied than other countries, uh, often because it can be difficult to do research on a country when you can't go there yourself, uh, when people are either not allowed to go in the country or people are reticent to go into countries with ongoing instability. But there has been uh, links between the environment, um, employment challenges, uh, and the opportunity cost to engage in political instability um, and violence. Uh, so again, a few uh, takeaways. Um, lastly, the polity index, you see Burundi has pretty much bounced around within the what would be considered the anocratic category, a country that has some democratic institutions, um, but also autocratic uh, constraints in certain areas, which can make it difficult to um, commit to policies uh, or to have strong enough institutions to deal with uh, challenges like the death uh, of a leader. So with the, the two videos, it shows um, how people are dealing with the deforestation and trying to reduce it, as well as how to uh, adapt agricultural production in ways to try to pr uh, preserve the resources that still uh, are there and to try to reduce the footprint um, for agricultural uh, production.